Okay, fantastic. Next, we have community service. We have Barrett and Darius. Um, we might as well just go from left to right. So, um, Barrett, whenever you are ready, I will stop sharing and you can go. Cool. So, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Barrett. I'm currently a junior nursing student. Uh, in high school, I accumulated over 200 uh, hours of community service volunteering with special needs children and at various places like retirement homes, agricultural farms, soup kitchens, and schools. Uh, my goals are to get people involved in this community and foster a space that promotes both engagement and learning. Uh, I plan to maximize participation by working with our community to get people involved in events that they would want to go to. Thank you, Barrett. Um, Darius, whenever you are ready, you can go ahead and start. Hi, my name is Darius. I'm a first year here, business major. And honestly, I don't have any experience being a part of a formal organization. My hometown doesn't have much sense of community or pride. So I've been silently waiting for years to make it out here, and become, become part of something bigger. For most of my life, I've been driven by my uncle Roy, who was an alumni here at SU. And he went on to do great things for the Seattle Filipino edu educational communities. And I I think I finally found here a community that I can really ride for and make the right connections to make the first steps into making doing right by the city. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you guys both for your wonderful speeches. We will take our quick two minute um, break and y'all can get ready for questions. And then everyone else, please send in some questions to Sherry and we'll get started shortly. So our first question will be from our current community service chair. So Ari, whenever you're ready with your question, take it away. Okay, so with the country opening back up and school being in person in the fall, how do you plan on doing community service in a safe way? And I'll also post it in the chat so you can look back at it. Um, well, like the way I see it is if we're on campus next year, we will all be vaccinated. And so that means that we essentially have a force of people who can safely work with vulnerable communities and not have as much of a risk. And of course, we should still take precaution and wear masks and everything. But since we are not at as much of a risk of spreading the disease, we can still get involved in the community and not have to worry about that factor. Um, uh, I've always been one to trust the science. So I'm going to follow what the CDC and what the school says in terms of um, keeping safe, social distancing, masking. Now, as we know, uh, the school just um, made it so if you're outside, you don't have to wear a mask, but inside you still do. And as Darius was saying, we're all going to be vaccinated if we're going to be on campus. So I think just following the rules of either the school or the CDC, or if we want to add an organization, um, following the rules to keep everyone, us and everyone else safe. Great. Thank you for answering that question. So now we will have the question from the alumni. So um, provide an example of when you were able to successfully organize an event for a diverse group of people. Uh, well, for me, um, I was planning to try to hang out with some coworkers after work, and this is during the pandemic. So uh, one of the things of having such a like diverse group of people is trying to get, I guess, communicate well with everybody because uh, all my coworkers are from different backgrounds. They live different places. Um, some of them are in school, some of them are not. So one of the first things was uh, making sure everyone's on the same page and making sure uh, everybody is heard in what they want to do in this event. Uh, it was, we were going out to get some food and we wanted to sort of make sure everyone uh, had a say in what they wanted to do. Honestly, I don't have that much to add on to that. I, again, I haven't been a part of any organization. So the most I've done is probably about the same lane of just organizing friends together who are from different backgrounds. But I do agree that you need to make sure every voice is heard and that everybody's needs are, needs are met and you're not tokenizing anybody or trying too hard to please any one person. Great, thank you everyone. Um, and then now we have a question from the general audience. 
So how do you plan to engage OMA, the Office of Multicultural Affairs, other student organizations, and also the larger Seattle slash Seattle U community? I'll put it in the chat as well. Uh, well, I think the um, organizations you listed, OMA, uh, student orgs, CLU population, and even I think CCE to an extent, um, I see these as huge uh, resources of um, the resource being people, right? This is the best way to get a lot of people involved. So um, I think it would be, there was a certain op opportunity to be had in mobilizing this um, population to get the word out and try to communicate with them to organize events, not just for us, but for them if they need people. I think that would be a, a good story. Yeah, I agree completely. Like we need to, I think we can get a nice system going of sharing work and gathering more people as a group and participating in each other's events and making sure we're straight. Like I think that we should really put a lot of emphasis on helping the BSU because I know there's a lot of pressure on them right now considering how the climate is. And of course there's that controversy and everything, but we should just really organize and try to have a one big shared uh, workforce instead of trying to divvy it up between groups. Great, thank you guys. Um, we do have one more question since we had a pretty good influx of questions for this round. So Sherry will ask this one. Okay, so question from general members. Um, while the CDC may begin to lift guidelines, many community orgs are still private and still take heavy precautions despite vaccinations and lifting sanctions. So what are some plans in case you cannot meet with the community? Um, as answered in one of the other questions, I think following what the CDC says is very important. Uh, I also, I just would like to point out that in about three or four months after summer, uh, things may be looking different in terms of how many people are vaccinated, whether we'll still be masking indoors or outdoors. So I think a lot of it is still uh, is just uh, playing it by ear and seeing what things look like in the future, I guess. Yeah, I think we should definitely respect the establishment, whatever it is. But I do recognize that if we are still remaining remote for a lot of communities, like we can still organize and do stuff like digital activism is a very real thing we all know and we, zoom is continue going strong and if like the community needs us to be in zoom rooms then so be it that's where we'll be awesome thank you so much for your responses y'all 